that's good. Let's start out. Yeah, that's even better. Okay. So for those who are watching the replay, I would advise you to probably skip ahead a few minutes until you can actually see some action going on. I am going to be looking down at my laptop for a few minutes. Until I can see that somebody is on. And what I'm really just going to be doing is probably working on a blog post and talking to you guys at the same time. I fell asleep, so I'm like barely waiting. I had cooked some some beans. Oh, I still got to finish making the... Uh, hey, Quinn, how are you? I made... Oh, I need to... I'm going to have to change the title of this video. Oh, my God. I'm going to finish making, I guess we could still talk about it, but I'm supposed to be finishing up the sea moss. I'm good. Thank you. I made, I started making sea moss earlier today and I was supposed to finish it on here. So I'm going to probably do that instead of what I was going to do, which is right. Finish working on this blog post and talking to you guys about starting your own like business. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that came from Ross. They came from us. Thank you. Yeah, I was going through my stuff and I was looking at, I'm getting rid of some stuff for um, the new year and I was trying to figure out what goes and what stays. These are stay. I think they're kind of cute. But I'm going to, um, let me get up. Now I have to go. I forgot I had the sea moss in there, honestly. But I wanted to just, talk, I really do want to talk about how to turn your passion into a hobby because it's really something that I think people don't realize that they can do. And you can do it to the point where it would re or it could replace your income if you're looking for it to do that. Um, it would just open it. Even if you don't want to replace your income, it would just like your, your job income. It would just be an additional source of income. But I think all of us can do something at home in addition to what we already doing. If we already have a job or something, that's fine. Just leverage the knowledge that you have from your job um, and then turn that into like your own business. It could be a YouTube channel. It could be a, a ebook. It could be a, um, a blog where you write in content on it. Um, like on a consistent basis, like I'm still redoing some stuff from one of, from one of my websites, and right now I'm working on my um I'm trying to figure out my what my real passion is. I need to get out of my comfort zone and try something new. Well, even if you try something new, like you can just record, like record yourself going through this new um journey, and there's gonna be people that would like to see that, and you could capitalize on that, and so you could just take whatever you're going through so let's just say you want to garden or you want to learn how to rollerblade you can start rollerblading or skating you know talking about how you found your skates what um equipment you use what pads um what surfaces you like to roller skate on you know what uh do you wear when you roller skate stuff like tricks to learn for beginner roller skate skaters and stuff like that and then you can turn that into your, you can either sell the product or you can sell the information on, what you see? Oh, sorry, my dog like walked over to the door. But you want to go outside? I don't know what he got going on, but, um, so yeah, you can just turn, even like having a pet, whatever kind of pet you have, you can turn that into, a, um, a website or like a podcast you could just specifically talk about life with a dog or life with you know a specific kind of dog would be probably more um would be better because then it would be more niche now the thing is sometimes people pick stuff that may be too light and narrow so go for something that has a little bit of competition or some competition even if like with people they don't want to really do talk about maybe pets or um hair or stuff like that or um anything that they feel is, that the market is oversaturated with but if the market has a lot of competition in that area that's because it's money to be made but you just have to have a more innovative way of selling bringing that product to 
the marketplace instead of doing what everybody else is doing what can you do that makes this product more um like your for you like people like you and so i would definitely start by looking at stuff like if you got kids you know the mom of you know they have several youtube channels on here if you want to put your kids out there some people feel some type of way about putting their kids online but you could do a whole youtube channel about you know a day in the life of a mom with these these many kids or a day in the life of you know a single mom or whatever like that like it's all type of ways that you can um and then I would do YouTube and I would do a website, though. I would do both of them together. I know it's going to be people on here that's going to probably tell you to pick one. But YouTube and a blog together, you can turn your YouTube channel more into, like, your community and where you build your audience at. And at the bottom of the... Um, stop, Rocket. At the bottom of the... um. In your description, you would put, you know, a link to your website where, where you um, either have some more content on around a specific topic or you selling something. And even if you do have more content around, you still would end up selling something at some point where even if you just get in their email um, address and later, you know, sending them through a, um, a funnel that way. Or you could just be having a product that's on your website and then they just buying that product from you after you do a review on it. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, this is what, I mean, this is what I did. This is what I learned how to do. And so I wanted to show other people basically how to take stuff. So it don't make it, it's not like you're always working if it's stuff that you already like, even though you can make money off of it. So it's a saying out there, if you do something you love, you'll never work another day in your life. But it may, you may not love writing, maybe because I started off as writing as a blogger and, but I felt like YouTube became, it was easier for me than writing, even though I know how to write and I can put together an article, it, that took a lot of, you know, force, but YouTube was way easier. So for me, I kind of shifted my focus more into YouTube than blogging, but I do understand how important it is to blog and to use a website for traffic because as a cosmetologist, I was getting traffic from Google and I still do get traffic from Google. And sometimes like today, I um, I had a conversation with a young lady and she it was about a hairstyle that she, um, she wanted the hairstyle, but it wasn't what she wanted. She went somewhere else. And so... I was talking her through it and what, you know, what could be done because she sent me a picture of her hair. And so when I talked to her, I know she found me on Google, but I didn't, we didn't end up doing business together, but we end up connecting on a different level. I was like, well, you know, she was like, well, I'm gonna call you on Tuesday, you know, just to check back in. But I told her to keep her hairstyle instead of paying to get it redone just to keep it. And, you know, in the future as somebody to do this this hairstyle this specific way with the uh certain words so she will understand how to explain what she was actually looking for even though she did kind of get it she wasn't getting exactly what it was but anyways the whole point is she found it on google and me and her end up connecting and so now we might not be doing business as a cos cosmetologist or hairstylist versus client it could be just she does taxes she may be able to teach me some business tactics tax yeah tax tactics that I can share and I can show her some techniques on how to get, you know, her um, tax services ranked on the first page of Google for certain terms in her city, in the city. And that's what um, being a cosmetologist really showed, allowed me to tap into that and let me go from doing hair, just being like a hairstylist to being a business person. And then I just learned how to market the service online. And once you learn how to market your services, then you can start selling products. So you can either sell products to the people that you're ser providing a service for, or you can sell product. Uh, you can sell your yeah, products to everyone else on your website. But it does take a while to get ranked for certain words. So you may get ranked in your city on Google. Um, before you get ranked nationally for a keyword. But if you use your city first and then build off of it, then all the other stuff will like fall into place. But you can turn anything into a business, any hobby. If you paint, even if you're not a good painter, who cares? Just start painting on camera. And then you can take your pictures of, you know, whatever it is that you're painting 
and you can either put them on as you, you can do the video while pe watch, letting people watch you paint but you can also put the pictures on your website and either sell somebody probably will buy your pictures from your website because they saw you painting that picture on YouTube and even if they just want to support you I mean let them it's gonna be people out there that are specifically here to support you but you have to put something in the marketplace to attract those people you can't sell nothing like you have to have something to sell so if you want to just find something like if you can make candles do like just show us the process like i'm just showing the process of me transitioning from a entrepreneur uh, employee that was actually working from a full-time or like a regular staff employee to like a travel um employee to a straight up entrepreneurship and that's what i'm showing a specific group of people but it applies to anybody because the, the overall concept is that i'm going from employee to entrepreneur but you have to like it now being an entrepreneur is not the easiest job or like it's not the easiest thing to do because you have so many at the beginning you're doing everything so like even to have your own brand you still become the marketer you become the sale person you become you know the copyright person you become the editor like you're everybody i'm my own bookkeeper you know like i'm everything to my brand but at some point, I'll be able to give other people like certain tasks. Maybe somebody can come in that may understand, you know, sales and I can just pass that part off to them and they can just keep creating sales for me. But the whole idea is to start where you're at and to take what you already know about. Like I said, it could be kids. It could be cleaning your house. It could be organizational tactics for moms with multiple kids. It could be quick dinner preps, you know, gardening, how to um, store, what is it, how to process, um, like, preserve your garden vegetables, um, quilting, I don't, I don't, crafting, any type of th anything, like, just pick something. Uh oh, even if you cut in your grass, you can just talk about the lawnmower, get a specific lawnmower or try multiple lawnmowers and review all of those lawnmowers. And if you review them, you can review them on YouTube channels. Hey, Ariel, you can review them on a YouTube channel or you can review them on your website or a blog or I mean, a podcast. All three of these methods are very simple to get into. It's not hard. You just go on YouTube. Like right now, I'm using my phone. We on, we just on my regular phone i have a galaxy samsung s10 plus um i'm glad you had a good day you still ain't in bed that's good area i took a nap today it was kind of gloomy but um i fell asleep after i ate my lunch so i'll probably be up all night because of that um but yeah you can turn anything into a business these days and like i say youtube you can just pull your phone out there's nothing fancy about what i got my setup right now um it's very easy and then um the websites are simple to build i am going to be doing a webinar and i'm going to be giving away um i'm doing a giveaway as well okay area we can talk about it give me one second let me finish um what i'm saying because i'll get sidetracked um but yeah you can i'll be giving doing the giveaway and doing a webinar and i'll be teaching people how you can either like basically take what you already know from your brain and then transfer it over to an actual home business and if it's a home business then you are open to a different set of tax deductions and tax write-offs and things like that so that's another reason why um you see my question yes oh is it is it a bad idea if i were fast food for the rest of my life period yes why wouldn't you want more for yourself you got to want more for yourself um well it's not bad or good i mean i guess if you want to own the fast food company if that's in that sense it wouldn't be bad if you want to work as an employee then you gotta ask yourself why don't you want more for yourself but i would um instead of looking at working at fast food for your entire life take your journey from fast food from mcdonald's to and put it on youtube or show other people you know your journey and maybe they'll either give you um, ideas on how to get out. Um, I'm taking CBD for it now. Yeah, I hope it works for you, Ariel. I'm not really sure how CBD um, works for um, anxiety. But I would say even if you got something like that going on, write, out, write about it. If you got um, 
share share your story with other people how the CBD is working for you and your anxiety. And then, you know, there is ways to put ads on your website that'll pay you. The ads from YouTube will pay you. But there will also be companies out here that may have CBD that you could sell and get a commission for if you refer other people to them. So that's that's how I'm trying to explain this to make money, you guys. Like, it doesn't have to be something extravagant. If you... Whatever you're doing, there is a product to go with the service. You just attach a product to the service. I like digital products. And what I mean by digital is, um, yeah, it works for now. Okay. Um, I get nervous really quick, you know. Oh, okay. Um, I like digital products because then all I have to do is email it to you or you could go to a website and there's less... Um, shipping and product handling all that stuff involved it's just very straightforward so digital products for me and what digital products also allowed me to do was to learn um how to market myself online is really what i learned with digital products and so i would say try to pick um i would definitely because that was just something that i was doing for my business so for you whoever's watching this i would say pick something that you already know about and go from there. Or even if you don't know about it, if it's something that you want to learn about, I would do it. Yeah, okay. Uh, try that then, area. That's not too bad. That's not too long of um of a school um, process, I guess. But for me, I think at this point, even if you do decide to go to school, the idea would be to have some type of business outside of school, some, something that doesn't have you relying solely upon going to school or um you know if you you could go to school and then just share your journey on going to school whether writing a book writing a um blog articles about it or youtubing your journey do something it like add on to what you are already doing and that will give you more that'll start providing income for you that um, you may not be have access to otherwise. I'm not trying to start a business. I'm confused about school, okay? I had to watch this video and this guy said, you're surely gonna make money. Wait a minute. Okay, I had watched this video and this guy, you said, you're surely gonna make money someday. I was like, at least somebody believed me. Yeah, but the key is to believe in yourself, Ariel. Like that's gonna be the biggest, um, that's like the biggest nurse midwife. Oh, okay. Believing yourself is going to be the biggest challenge. And it's the hardest challenge for a lot of people. But I think once you believe in yourself, then anything that you need to, um, everything else that you will face will be easier because you already know. If don't nobody else believe in you, then you do. Because it will be a time where you're the only person that's going to believe in the idea that you have. Um, if you have multiple ideas, here your body and mind. I just bought a sewing machine and I'm going to learn how to sew. Yes, do that and sh and look, do a YouTube channel and you don't even really have to do your face and all that stuff if you don't want to when it comes to sewing. But I would talk. So maybe if you just showed your um sewing setup, you could whatever sewing machine you have, go on to amazon.com and see if, um, go to the bottom of their uh, website, there's a link called affiliates. Try to sign up for them and then you could sell that same um, sewing machine to other people if you like it. If it's a good sewing machine, you can basically do a YouTube channel where you're reviewing nothing but sewing machine products and you know, but like, and then you can offer your service to buy, uh, to sell them clothes, whatever kind of clothes you're selling. But I would document the journey and I would talk about, you know, how you found your sewing machine, what made you purchase that specific sewing machine and things like that. You're welcome. But Amazon has, um, Amazon Joann's also has a affiliate program I think Joanne's, you will have to sign up under Commission Junction. I'm not sure, but type into Google affiliate program um, for crafting or like sewing machines. But I know Joanne's has one 
and Walmart has an affiliate program. So does Amazon and probably Michael's. Like, I, those would be the big ones. A certified nurse midwife is, is under... I like, okay. I didn't know that area. But yeah, I would definitely do... Um, I would definitely talk about my sewing experience like that people like that's a skill too that a lot of women don't have <laughs> like it's almost worse than cooking like I can cook and I really I have a sewing machine though but maybe I'll try to sew something one day but I don't really use it I don't even have it's like a I guess it's an okay sewing machine I wouldn't say it's a great sewing machine but it's okay well I would like to get a serger though just because I saw what they could do but I don't really have no intentions on making any clothes, I don't think. But it would be nice to, like, have to practice to just try. Um, I would be the type, instead of going buying new fabric, though, I would go to Goodwill and refurbish, like, clothes at Goodwill and stuff like that. I think that would be way cooler than going, well, maybe not, I guess, have, making your own. I got the brother's brand. Yeah, me too. Mine is too. It's like got flowers and stuff on it. It's like purple and some flowers. A certified midwife is a, is more easier for me to do. But I think I have to take... Yeah, I'm not really sure about that one area. About the, um, the course for midwife. But that's what I would do, you guys. But um, yeah, and then you can even talk about like your thread... And even if you wanted to, you could start selling your own patterns. It's for a sewing goals. Like you could like, and it would just be a PDF. You can just do it like in Word and then Word, save it from Word as a PDF. And then um, when you upload it to Google or not Google, but when you upload it, to, you can upload it to Amazon and put a picture over it. Yeah, if I messed up set for. I mean. Oh, okay. I don't really know about midwifery, though. Yeah, you can do that. That'd be okay. I don't know about midwifery, um, but I mean, my homegirl, actually, she did it, but she had triplets. So I think in the process of her having triplets, she used the midwife. But I would just discuss my journey going through, even like how, like area right now, how you're going through trying to figure out what, um, a career field to go into i would document that because there's people out here that are trying to figure out you know what career field to go into is just like you are and they may be you know in the similar position that you are in as far as working at mcdonald's um and wanting to get a better do have you know a better life and two years scrubbing yeah you can i mean it doesn't really matter how you i would just pick something and start working towards it because all of those career fields you're still gonna have to go to school for like they're gonna require a certain amount of prerequisites so you can talk about um your journey on picking what program or which school to go to and things like that and just share that with the world through either a podcast through your website or through youtube out and then I'm not saying not Instagram and Facebook. Instagram and Facebook and all those sites are there to support your brand. They aren't the places for you to be building your platform on. You can get audience from the even with YouTube. You I would still be kind of careful. That's why I say have your own website and a you could do a podcast if you don't want to do your face. Um, but if you do your own um, website, then if YouTube, uh oh, if YouTube for some reason, take your channel down, you will still have access to your audience through your own website. And the same thing for Facebook and Instagram. Those those platforms have um, policies and things in place. And so once if they change their policy and you and you are compliant for whatever reason, if you've only built your um, audience around you know, on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, then you may not have access to those people's emails. So the idea, that's why if you're watching um, people online that are talking about marketing tactics, they'll tell you how important it is to have an email list. And an email list puts you in control of your customer, or at least it gives you the opportunity to get in front of your customers 
um, a lot more. So like with YouTube, if somebody signs up to me, I, I don't have their email address. I just have their username or whatever, and I can go back and see who, you know, subscribe that way. But if they go through my channel, then it will automatically, I mean, not my channel, but my website, then they would lie, um, put, log in or put their email address and the name in to get access to a particular item or particular product. So that's why you give email addresses. And then the idea would be to put that person on an email list and to start funneling them to um to purchase a product from you or a service from you. So uh, but you would just email them like regular. It wouldn't have to it would I wouldn't spam nobody. I would probably do like an email every day, every other day or something like that around whatever you're trying to sh story <clears throat> that you're trying to um share with them because the idea is for you to share a story with people in order for you to um connect with them, but it needs to be solving a problem. It can't just be you out here you know, telling stories for no reason. Like the whole idea is to be of service. So for me, my product to you guys is me sharing how to go, how to take what you know and to turn it into your own business, right? Or your own, like some an additional form of income is what um, I'm going to say. So if you want to go ahead and just stay working, that's fine. It's easier for you to do a business when you have a job because, you got money coming in. So if you stop looking at your job as if your job is this bad thing, look at your job as if it is it, it is what it is. It's just a means to an end. It's just a tool. So look at it more as a um as your investor versus your employer. That's how I started looking at my jobs when I was at the end of coming out of working as a surgical tech, I was still making money. I was traveling. So I was making even more money than I would have been if I was just working as a staff person. But the money at some point, even though I was making them, it wasn't enough money for me to be doing what I was doing. I felt like I wanted to be doing something different and enjoying my life. So I took what I know and I, what I know from being a cosmetologist, cause I learned how to, um, blog and stuff as a cosmetologist or how to market I should say as a cosmetologist and sales as a cosmetologist that's what I learned and I took those skills with the money from me working as a surgical tech and I started going towards how to build myself up online how to get an online presence right but as genuine as possible like I'm not here to be fake with nobody I want people to see like a regular person can do this so you if you have a job that you're going to and you don't like it find something else that um you do like and start using the money from your job to you know start doing things that you enjoy in life and then you will be able to actually get more um fulfillment out of your life instead of just working and hating that you go to work and stuff like that instead of hating that you go to work give your job a purpose not just the purpose of paying your bills like that's your employer and i mean that's your investor and take the money that they are investing in you and you reinvest it into a um a hobby that you enjoy something that you like to do so yeah you guys that's what i have for you today i don't know how long i'm going to be on here i'm just on here to share um, what I have with you guys so you can understand that I think YouTube would probably be the easiest way to start but YouTube you have to be consistent and have I would say maybe stay like focused on one niche but if it's your name and you want to brand yourself where you have where you think you're going to be involved in more businesses than just one like this is this channel is my name even though we're talking a lot about surgical technology i'll be talking about business as well and just lifestyle and creating the type of lifestyle that you want so there will be multiple different you know businesses i'm gonna drop this a little bit um that i'll be discussing on this channel but the idea is really just for me to um to use this as like the place to try out new ideas and then if i feel like it's something that i want to explore more then i'll have another channel and branch off that so kiafa is just the top um that's just the beginning of the business and then there's other businesses that is under kiafa and so i do all of them right now until something hits and then once it hits um then i'll 
start focusing on growing a team towards that business. And then I'll just, once I get done with that, then I'll do the same thing. But everything that I'm doing is stuff that I like to do, or at least that I'm curious um, about experiencing. And so it, it could be anything though, like I have a garden, so I might be working on some garden, some gardening um, content to, you know, bring to market um, that I'm going through, uh, you know, different hair, uh, hair journeys and things like that. Just sharing my, sharing my experience and turning it into a way that I can get paid for it. And anybody can do it. And I don't have to sell. I don't really even, wouldn't even have to sell anything from to you guys. I could literally start a whole new channel and focus solely on whatever I want to, you know, whatever it is that I want to focus on and build an a audience around that specific topic or do it as well with a website where I'm just talking about one specific topic. And even at least I would get ad revenue, um, but I would turn it into uh, where I would be selling products. So it wouldn't just be ad revenue. It would be ad revenue and um, my sales would be ads. Um, not my sales, but my income would be coming from the ads, but I would also be having sales from other uh, other products that I'm affiliated with. And so this is what the webinar basically will be on. I'm going to be teaching business and I may later um, offer some um, surgical tech study group stuff um, because I did have a couple people reach out to me about that. And so, hi, Past Creations. How are you? I saw your video. I saw the video you posted today. I had took a nap, and when I woke up, it was up, and I watched it. I think I liked it. I, I'm pretty sure I liked it. If I didn't, I'm going to go back and like it after I get off. But, yeah, so even, like, uh, just with anything, that's what I was trying to say. I would say I, I just want to sell. I like to make sales and turn it, not just sales, but sales from things that I enjoy and just so I don't have to work. Oh, you're welcome. But you're going to make one every day, right? Yes, Kiafa. I'm going to make a video every day. Say yes. <laughs> you got to make one every day, even if it is for a minute or two minutes. It don't have to be anything long. And you could probably just start uploading straight to YouTube if you don't want to um, do a whole bunch of editing. You did too today. So you know you could just upload it and then have it go public tomorrow. I was that's what I was doing a little bit, like having a few um videos just kind of already sitting on YouTube. But I don't know if it messes with your um uh, with the algorithm though. So I don't know. That part I wonder if you just upload it and then allow it to just uh, make make it private or make it private when it uploads and then go public with it the next day or just upload them just upload as many oh just upload but i would i probably would try to stretch it out okay yeah if you got more content just make more content just keep making content it does i mean just make as much as you can i would but the only thing i know sometimes i get like overwhelmed with my day or something now you guys are more of a priority but at the beginning I would get um, overwhelmed with my day and it was just easier for me to have certain like videos already done. So even if you don't have them on YouTube, you could probably just start having like a, like doing batch. Um, it's called batch creating or something like that, where you have a whole bunch of them. Like if you got an hour a day, then maybe you do like five videos on five different topics or something like that. Five, 10 minute videos. Yeah. Five, 10 minute videos. And it don't have to be perfect. Like, you don't have to do a whole lot of um, editing. I wouldn't work. I mean, I would do editing if you got time to edit. Sometimes you might not have time to edit. And if you don't, then just go straight to YouTube or just vi record the video and just post it right then. I think you might be able to... Um, I know, like, on my phone, I can do some editing on my phone, but I like Keymaster to do my my editing on my phone as far as my videos go. And then, but sometimes I don't want to wait to have to upload the Keymaster or not upload. You have to download that video and then you got to still upload it to YouTube. 
And so sometimes that might take a while if the video is long. But if it's not a long video, then, you know, I mean, it wouldn't be hard to do on Key Master. I just think sometimes it's easier just to cut out the extra steps, especially when you work in. Like, it'll be just easier to go straight because at least you'll be getting it done. And the idea is for you to do it as much as possible until you start getting paid because you'll start getting paid. And I'm going to show you how to get paid, not just with, um, I, I just, I bought that app. Got to learn it though. Yeah. It's, um, it's not that hard. It did, but I would just, up. Uh, I mean, use what you've been using, but you can still just go straight from your phone to, um, to YouTube to make it easy for yourself. You really could. And then if if you once you start getting paid, you can like you can get ad revenue like what I was talking about earlier. I don't know if you caught that, but I was talking about ad revenue earlier, and not just ad revenue. Then you can um start finding products that you might um in shot. Oh yeah, I think I seen them a long time ago. But I started with Keen Master probably like I've been using them probably four years now. Honestly, maybe three. So, you know, like once you like now I got kind of like used to how they um how to use them. But I think at first it might have been a little bit difficult, but that's just part of being like a content creator. Sometimes we have to learn different tools and the tools is what's going to help you. Um, I got another tool that I can tell you about, too, but the tools, they'll help you create the content so you don't have to do so much. But um king master is a little more manual but i did have i do have a different video um editing software that i'll use that'll help me not have to edit my um videos but it i pay for it. it's like a lot it's like at this point 60 dollars a month but those are just for like it would be like having a per instead of having a person edit your video then this um tool will edit it and I mean, I like it, but it is sixty dollars a month. So, but that's for later. Like, I still do edit my own videos too. So, I just have different options, and I think that's just part of once you keep doing certain, like being in this kind of field where I'm just producing a lot of different forms of content, whether it's articles or videos, and for websites and stuff like that, I started purchasing certain tools to help me do that, and so. But yeah, but Key Master is, not, I mean, I, InShop is, if it's working, like keep using it. But I do know that it's going to be a little difficult when, um, when you have job, you know, when you at work and you got to edit or you just want to get the video out. I would just put the video out. If the message is good, don't worry about all the other stuff. Like if you got a good message, just share the message. Don't um, let the editing and all that fancy stuff get in the way of you. Producing the, con the, producing the content. I took a nap today and my face feels so puffy. It just feel like, like I was sleep. I was knocked out too. I normally don't sleep. But yeah, you guys hit the like button for me if you're in here and, you, um, and you've been watching the video. I would greatly appreciate it. But yeah, if you have um, any type of hobby like i was saying earlier then turn your hobby into a um going to try to release one every sunday yeah okay so once you got four once you got one for the month then go back and do another four i think you can do four video i think you can do batch recording i think for you because you work i think batch recording would be a good idea for you to do and batch recording is like what i say you taking you an hour and recording as many videos as you can in that hour and then you don't have to release them all that day but that'll give you okay you did four so boom all your sundays are done so then either you can go to the next month or you can say okay i'm gonna start doing two videos a month you know and then but i think once you look at it based off of hours and doing it in batches it'll be easier for you so if you got a couple of different things you want to talk talk about just do a couple of different videos and then boom you, you good to go that's what i would do with any if i was doing my youtube channel like if i was to start a new youtube channel 
and it's I was working. I would start. I would just record a whole bunch of videos in one day, as many as I can in one day. That's what I would do. And then, so if you want to do one every Sunday, there's four Sundays in a month. So then you can say four Sundays in a month. You can do twelve um, for twelve months. And then you can start adding a second set of um, days. So then you can go back if you want to do it like that. But I'm going to tell you this. The more, if it's YouTube, the more content you produce, the more, the faster you'll get results. So I'm going to say, okay, if you want to do it. But I would suggest you do a 90-day challenge first. Post every day for 90 days. And I know you're going to be like, yeah, for what is you talking about? I want 100 videos in less than 100, like 90 videos in 90 days and watch what happens to your channel. But if it's on a specific topic, it'll be better. So that's why I wouldn't be jumping around. Like I just, because I did it. I jumped around on my channel and I know it messes with the algorithm. So you, you guys will see me now talk a lot more about surgical tech because that's what my channel had responded to the most after I had picked a lot of stuff to talk about. Now, I will talk about surgical tech. I don't have no problem with it. But that my goal is to show you how I went from that to where I'm at now, to where I'm just making content online. And you can sell, if even if you want to, if, if you learn certain skills, you can freelance the skills out to make more money. So let's just say you end up learning um, for Paris Creation. You learn how to edit using a tool that I can show you then you can start editing for other people. And there's a site called Upwork.com and they um, hire freelancers all the time. You don't even have to go through like a hiring process. You just have to be able to deliver the service that they're looking for. They pay you through the site. And that's just another source of income. But I stopped doing freelance work because what I learned is that I was still working for other people and I can make more money if I sent, put my own products and stuff out there. Not just my own, but like like I feel, work on my own websites and stuff. Hold on, wait a minute. Ooh. Oh, wait a minute. Hi, cuz I'm gonna expand it. Uh, I'm about to come back. Uh, sorry, guys. Facebook popped up. Um, uh, that made sense. But then it is going to be an issue over quality. Over no, it won't because the video quality. So look, just the, the message, it won't. The message is where the quality is. So that's what, that's more important, not so much the editing. If you can get a good thumb, practice editing your thumbnails more than like the video. Don't worry about the video. Like if you got good lighting and you got good audio, that's the quality, you know, and then your message. The, the video editing and the software will get, unless you want to build your software, unless you want to build your editing skills up to um, to actually offer that as a service, then I wouldn't focus on editing. It's going to get in your way because now you got to learn how to do your work of software when you should be creating content and all you need is a, a video. Right now we on my phone, but you can't go live yet. Once you get a thousand subscribers, then you can go live. And then you can even, I feel like editing is is right now something that I would just do just to do, just because I could do it. But if I'm trying to get the word out, if I'm trying to get my message out first, then I would produce more content. And I would do 90 days of straight content around one particular topic and then go to like, every Sunday, if you want to, like, that would be a more of an aggressive approach to getting, you know, the traffic and to being clear on who your audience is. And then you'll be able to bring something else to the market. Like, you might be able to, um, sorry guys, I thought somebody was like at the door, but then you might be able to bring something else to the, um, to, like I was saying, to the market, to where you can have a specific service or a specific product that may that you may um, be able to sell. But first, I would get the audience. I would work on my audience first. Not I wouldn't worry about editing. Editing would be probably at this point, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't worry about editing. But it would be. Um, it is, it is nice to know how to edit, but I wouldn't, if you want to learn how to edit, that's different. Or if you want to sell your editing services, that would be different. But I wouldn't focus on editing if I'm a, if I'm trying to learn how to use YouTube as a business to create a second um, source of income.
and you can use YouTube as like the easiest thing that you can do is to make videos to get and the videos I'm honestly going to tell you to make longer videos, but they don't have to be long at the beginning. You can do 10 minute video, do 90, 10 minute videos, which is like only 90 minutes. It's going to be more than that because, you know, it takes a while to make a video, but I would do that and then I would cut back. First, you got to get the ball rolling. It's like going uphill. You know what I'm saying? Like, first, you got to get up the hill. And then when you get up the hill, I, when you coming down, it's a little bit easier. And then even going up the next hill, it's a little bit easier because you have some momentum from the first, you know. But the first initial situation was you getting it up the hill. So your 90 days is you pushing up the hill. And then after that, you can kind of cut back on how, you, how much you want to um, promote. Hey, Jay. <laughs> I'm still, I'm like a little bit sleepy, you guys. I know y'all can probably see the bags. So forgive me because I did, I did take my nap and I didn't mean to. And when I take a nap, y'all be sleep. Like it was like a two and a half, three hour, like sleep. It wasn't a nap. <laughs> I went to sleep. But I'm here. And so we going to talk about, we talking about business, like start your business. And then too, like I was saying about the editing, it's instead of like going to school for editing or some of this stuff, just learn how to use the tools that are out there. Like it's editing software and you can learn how to edit and you can sell that. You can freelance those skills on Upwork or Fiverr. If y'all don't know about Fiverr, um, that's a channel, that's a website that you can go to, to, um, get people to do certain services and what i do like i used to put like services on these type of channels like i would not fiverr i didn't do fiverr because it, to me i felt like fiverr at the time was way more competitive but i did upwork and upwork is kind of a little bit a step up i would say from fiverr because it's more um entrepreneur small businesses over there and they're looking for like virtual assistants. So if you're looking for like a job, like a little gig or something, go hop over to um, Upwork. I probably should write a blog post about that, should I know? On how you guys can um, go over there and freelance some of the services, freelance some skills over there. And you don't even have to work for them. You, It's like you build your profile up. And what you do, what people do is they have a tool that they use, you guys. And you use this tool and you go over and you take the tool and you put it on Upwork or Fiverr and you work the tool, but you still provide the service. So like if I wanted to, I could go do ebook covers right now because I have tools. I have editing software that I use that I was talking about earlier that I pay $60 a month for. I can take that editing software and use it for somebody that needs editing on Upwork. And even though it's, I'm using a tool to do it, the idea is to provide the service. So some people don't know how to use these tools. You might not know how to use, um, hi, prudent mom. You might not know how to use, you know, the Adobe software that's out there. And so if you learn how to use Adobe software, we're just going to use that for an example. Then you can take that service and go use it online as a freelancer. This is why I like being into entrepreneurship. So I want you guys to just really learn how to do, like, yeah, if you want to go to school and all that stuff, like, okay, I get it. Cause you know, okay, that's, I get it. But if you're trying to make money and not go to school and you want to make money doing something that you like doing or that you maybe want to learn how to do, then you can use some of these tools out here to learn it and it'll help promote yourself. And in the process, because you don't learn a new skill, now you can go promote promote that skill. So right now, the skills that are out here that you might be able to find a tool to learn how to use and to leverage is like video market or video editing, um, and then like web website design and stuff like that. Uh, ad creations; those are all services that people are looking for right now. Social media um, managers, virtual assistants, all of those things have jobs out or like freelance contracts out where they're not jobs like you can do these for for other people and they'll pay you right and they're paying you but you going you're learning how to use a tool the tool is what you're going to use and that's going to help leverage your time so like i say i can do video mark i can do video editing all i need to do is get the video and then i can input it into this 
tool that I know how to use. And the tool is only $60 a month, right? And so if I sell my services at $200 for the contract, you know, and get the con and get that um tool delivered or get that product delivered within a week, not only did I make a profit, I it paid for the tool. This is how it's this is what it's being done, you guys. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You just got to learn how to like use the things that are already out here for you to use. Now, like I said, if you want to go to school and focus on going to school, I'm not telling you not to do that. Go do whatever your heart desires. Like it may be a reason you might go to school and meet your, you know, husband or your wife and not even finish school. Like there may be a reason that you need to go to school, but if it's about money, instead of putting so much time and energy into how to go into school to, to be a certain professional, to make a certain amount of money, look at what is being like done right now and what everybody is focused on. A lot of people are focused on building a online or building a business or starting their own boutique, you know, making an additional income outside of their job. Like people, people are looking for jobs and people are trying to figure out how to create their own income outside of working, right? Because maybe they lost their job or something like that. So you want to know how to make some more money, side hustles. Like the, if, if ain't nobody learned nothing in 2021, or 2020, we learned that side hustles basically was saving people with Uber Eats and Uber and DoorDash and all those things. So if you as a person that don't want to do that, what can you do? You can start delivering digital services to people. And it's very easy. And learning like video, like learning YouTube, learning how to edit the videos from YouTube, those all become skills. And those skills translate over. So I, that's why I'm just saying start something because even if it's in something that you do as a hobby, the skill that you're going to learn, not only will you learn it to benefit yourself, but if you have to, you can sell that skill to somebody else as a service or even barter it. You know, like if it's something that you want to, um, that you want, then you could just barter those services and say, okay, well, I'll do this for you. And so you can build a website and for somebody and really building a website is not as hard as what people would think it is um, these days. It's really like a couple of clicks and boom, you got a whole WordPress website. So that's why I don't like the other ones because WordPress is the the, the standard, the industry standard. And you can put a website, a WordPress website up in less than five minutes. And you just need to know how to use the tool to do it. And so you could charge somebody two, three hundred, four hundred dollars for a website design, a website build out. You know, and it all you did was spend like maybe two hours actually putting the content in place on the website and getting all of the right um, links and stuff in place. And then you just made a profit of 400, you know, three, $400. So if you want to learn how to do something like this, I will be doing a webinar on it. Um, I'll be showing you the tools and stuff, like the tricks that I learned and what I be doing and how like you can start doing it in your city you can start doing it for like it, if you want to do it for other small businesses you can where you can build out websites if you know about a specific business like there was a guy on here the other day i think it's jay davis and he does hvac and with hvac i was telling him to just turn into the hvac expert so like if he know how to do hvac he can basically write articles on um I definitely will like out because this is this is what I do. It's way easier for me to like show you guys this, and you can make your own. You can be like the whole expert around whatever topic you want to be the expert on. And so, like I was saying, he's the HVAC guy, and so building out a website. Um, yeah, I watched the video. Okay, um, he can build out. I can show him how to build out a website. And he can put HVAC websites in every city and he can either ask and I'll show him how to get, I'll show you how to get the traffic from the city, in the city and in the city, I say in the city cause it's easier to get, um, ranked on Google in the city. Hi Misha, how are you today? Did you have a good day today? So I will show you how to get ranked in your city so that the traffic comes to you, right? They come, the people are coming to you. So because he's the HVAC guy, he got an HVAC website in Jacksonville and on and 
Atlanta and Virginia, you know, all over. And what he's doing is he's sending traffic to that local HVAC company. Or he, if he wants to take that job, he can himself. But let's just say he's in Atlanta and he gets somebody on his website that needs, you know, HVAC services in Miami because he has the website and it's ranking in Miami. Then he would be connect. He would network with a HVAC company in that area, and they were um. That's good, Misha. I'm glad you had a good day. I had a really good day. I had a good day. I took a nap, but it's slow. It making me feel like sluggish a little bit. But I guess it was nice to be able to just you know take a nap today. But he would be able to get um network with other local HVAC company or yeah companies, small business companies, and refer you know, send them the leads and send them the clients or whatever. And they would either pay him to be on the page or um, he, yeah, they would pay him for the page or for the referral. And so his page can be having that and he can have ads on the channel on his page where he would be getting ad revenue and referral revenue from his age, multiple HVAC websites. So that's just one way to do it. Um, if you don't want to get all the way tech, like into building out websites and things like that, um, it's other ways to build, uh, to get an audience without having to go all the way into the tech world, but it's not as bad as you would think. And right now, like people are trying to figure out, um, hi Zayef, how are you today? Um, people are trying to find different ways to actually make a living or to increase their, home income to have more than one stream of income and i found like i say digital products was easier for me because that's what i was using i was purchasing these products and these tools for my salon to market myself as a cosmetologist and because i was marketing myself as a cosmetologist i was able to look at okay this this put me in front of my compet this put me in front of the clients that I needed to be in front of. But I was being taught, thank you guys for the lights. I was being taught some old marketing tactics. And because I was being taught old marketing tactics, I know that other people were being taught the old marketing tactics. So I started venturing out into website bills and stuff like that. And then I was able to freelance my services. Once I learned how to use the tools, then I was like, oh, yeah, I can build you a website. Oh, yeah, I can run SEO for you. Oh, yeah, I can do video marketing for you or video editing for you or pre a proofread in your um, articles because I pay for tools that help me proofread. And I'm already paying for it for my business. So why not leverage that for myself as well as for other people and still making money? So that's why I kind of pivoted from doing hair and being a uh, being a um a surgical tech is because I was make I was saying that I can make money from learning these digital marketing tools that was actually making me money. Thank you for the thumbs up. <laughs> but yeah, I want you guys to just think about whatever business it is, whatever passion you have, whatever whatever knowledge you think, whatever even if it's a story you have to tell. We all have stories. And your story may be like, maybe you just want to write books, fiction books, nonfiction books. I don't care. You can, I'm going to, I want to show you how to turn that into a business, like, or a, a, not even a business. It ain't even got to go as far as a business. It could just be a side hustle that you do at home. And if it's at home, we already know, like, I'm all for home businesses because it provides a tax write off for you. It doesn't matter how small the business is. If you start a YouTube channel, your phone and everything your home became a business if you're looking at youtube as a business so if you are purchasing tools and um, like softwares and stuff like that to practice that's part of your marketing as a small business owner that becomes a tax write off so just understanding the power of um having your own not only additional income but having your own home business like that's that's when you start playing you know, the big boy game and the big girl game, not just going to work and thinking like work is going to, like working for somebody else is going to save you. Working for somebody else is not going to save you. Working for somebody else is not going to put the type of money in your pocket that you're going to need to make, you know, a real change in the world. And ask me how I know, because I've been out here trying to make money 
working for years and it just didn't pay off. Even if you do make money, um, I heard talking about becoming a dog breeder. If you look at my, I saw that. I saw you had are those American bullies? What are, what are those American? Um, I am thinking about becoming a breeder. I am like that's that's definitely. <laughs> I'm definitely thinking about that. Uh, 179 tax. What's 179 tax, Jaya? Yes, Paris Creation. That's definitely on that. What is it? That's a breed? That's a type of dog? That dog looks mean. I mean, in intimidating. Mean is not the right word. I am thinking about becoming a breeder, though. That's something that... That's definitely something that's um and I I like dogs. I like pit bulls. I like red nose pit bulls. Like I am biased to dogs and um the temperament. And so everybody keeps telling me, oh, an Italian mastiff. Oh my God, that's a huge dog. Everybody be telling me I like mutts and stuff. I might, I might like a mutt or whatever. I guess like a pit. It's a lot of money in that. Yeah, I like I really do like um mixed breeds, but they say when you mix breeds, you turn a dog into a mutt. And so I mean, we're all mutts, aren't we? So why why not like embrace the mutt life? But I um I have been thinking about getting some dogs, you guys. Like that's definitely and I could do it here. I got a little bit of room that I could probably have some more dogs or some more animals. At least if I'm gonna get paid, um Pay for a French bulldogs. I was also thinking about doing quail as a um, like having some quail birds and selling quail eggs. I know y'all might be like, "What in the world, quail? The eggs um, and the they they they're worth more, and they don't take a lot of space up." And so that's also a home business too, you guys. That's this is what I'm saying. You get to do stuff. You get to do whatever you want to, like breeding dogs. You pick a dog. We have a whole. Before you know it, I have a whole website around that. Free tax LLC to write off a car instance. Oh, yeah. See? See, I didn't even know that. I know you can buy um your cars. Uh, I knew like a business car. Uh, yeah. But I didn't know free tax LLC to write off a car's expense for you. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, too. Yeah, homesteading. I'm definitely on that. Yeah, I'm actually in the process of looking for some land. I want to know who, like, my homeboy was getting on to me because as vets, we get uh, really good interest rates and stuff like that. And I don't know if y'all know this about me, but I'm borderline, like, anti-credit. Not anti-credit, but I'm just worried about the interest and all that stuff. Like, I do, I don't, I do appreciate the credit, but I'm just not for the interest. And so he was telling me, like, you know, how they're offering a lot of, um, credit lines for us here and we looking at some he was looking at some land and so he i'm looking at buying like 20 something acres if i can get my hands on it and then that'll i'll turn that into like i'll go stay there and live in a trailer until i can build my house like i'm that that's where i'm at <laughs> i'm okay with it if it doesn't have if i can't find something that has a house on it already the goal is to put something on it to live in and then turn it into like a little farm, basically, or homestead or whatever. So, yeah. And then that's a different type of tax write-offs as well It's when you homestead and stuff like that. But even to be homesteading here is an idea for me. Like I've been working on how to do things a little more like original, like even, but even I kind of like cooking. I was thinking about, trying some different ways of cooking, like preserving food and stuff like that. But that's just like a life's work. Like that's something that um I'll be doing throughout my life. It's not something that like, I'm just going to be like, oh, boom, this is what I'm doing. That's just like how, where my head is and where I'll be working, what I'll be working towards. Like growing my own food, taking care of animals. But even all of that comes with different, I learn stuff, even like with the animals, like I, I'm bare, uh, borderline a vet now. Like <laughs> I'm borderline a vet, and so it's just understanding that you know different journeys bring different experiences, and so I'm definitely on this animal experience and having like dogs. 
I mean, I like the dogs because they definitely provide a sense of um security. And so I had two dogs. This is the first year I've only had one. My pit, she died in April. So I haven't gotten another one yet. But yeah, she was 14, almost 15. She would have been 15 like um this uh December. She would have been 15 years old. But yeah, I'll be getting some. Y'all will get to see it. I even got some videos on here that I need to post. Um, I'll I'll have to edit them though because they're like multiple clips. And um I'll put them up of the animals and of the garden and what happened um uh, with the wind with the weather and stuff. But animals is definitely um a way and you can like the eggs. I have eggs. I mean, I have a couple of animals. I have a couple of chickens, and I'll be able to sell those eggs. And I could even sell the chickens if I wanted to, but... Uh. <laughs> but yeah, you guys. So, if you are... Um, I'll let you... I'm just going to keep um, posting stuff, too, on Surgical Tech. Paris Creation, we got to get together because I do want to interview you. I'll be conducting interviews on the channel next week. If you're open to collabing with me, that would be awesome. But do send me a DM so I can get your email. Like I'm gonna DM like DM me and then I'm gonna have to like DM you back with all the information with the, the link. I'm gonna try to do it Zoom, but I pay for a tool that I wanna try to use and see if it actually um I went live the other day by mistake working with the tool trying to see if I could use it or whatever and so i want to use it because it, it i pay for it already <laughs> so if not i'll have to pay for zoom's um subscription because if not then i think we only get like 45 minutes and i don't want it to cut us off so i was looking at zoom i know i can do it through zoom but i want to try my tool and so i've been working on that this weekend and yeah so i want to do some um some interviews with some surgical tests. So I'll put that on the channel. But I, my goal is to teach you guys how to go from like that to being able to like do whatever you want to do in life. You know, like have a, that's why I'd be like, have a plan. Like what's the five-year plan? And yo, even like if you tired, I know you're going to be tired. At work, this is to Paris Creation. I know you're going to be tired. Like I get it. I promise, but I swear if you just made the time, it'll it'll pay off. You got five years. I'm I'ma say you can build a whole brand in five years and use surgical tech to as the stepping stone. That's what I want to hear about. Yeah. Like that's that's where the money like surgical tech is good money as a career. Is is you're gonna make more than the average worker. So we already understand that. But we also know that you're going to get tired of working there. Like, you're going to get... I'm not wishing that you get burnt out. I just know you're going to get burnt out <laughs> at some point. And if you don't get burnt out, you're going to turn into this grumpy, you know, older surgical tech. And that... They're not all grumpy, but I'm just saying, you know, after a while, people that don't like their jobs, they be ready to, like... Bro, I also got a little side hustle that I'm working on. That's why I be tired. <laughs> no, it's cool, though. You supposed to do more than one thing. You got to have... Look, have, put your... It's like this... I was watching this man, and he was like, think of it as like a cannon, but you throwing little pellets at, like, in the dark, and then finally one of the pellets hit on something, and then you just have to keep hitting it. Like, that's, to me, how I think of different trying different things. Like, I try different things, and, and it might be at multiple times. So, like, right now, you got the surgical test stuff going on. You got other stuff going on outside of that. It's going to sound crazy to some people to tell you to try something else, but I'm going to tell you to try any and everything because you never know where you're going to hit at. Like, you really don't know. You don't know what you're going to hit on. It need to be something that you like. I will say that it does need to be something that you have a passion about. Because people can tell when you're doing stuff just for just for money. We got a lot in common just at different levels at this present time. Yeah, it be like that sometimes. But that's why when you go forward and like you still have to share. Like it would be wrong of me to have learned. And not to share it so you can learn it or whoever else behind me can learn it. 
but this is they're not gonna teach you this in orientation how to prepare for retirement they're gonna ask you do you want to sign up for a 401k and i mean you know i mean i guess a 401k but that's not gonna if you're trying to be like i'm trying to travel for a whole year and i i could do it now but i don't i'm not it's still i'm not where at the number that i want to be at as far as traveling facts when it's a hobby it does feel it feels much like work oh i think you meant it doesn't feel much like work it's not work when it's a hobby and you like it that's why they say if you're doing stuff that you love you'll never work a day in your life it's that that's um yeah i got you but um yeah, for sure. It's not it when you when you work when you doing stuff that you love and that you have a passion for. It's gonna be like now it is gonna be days where you like like I do get up in the morning, and I get up at like my alarm still go off at five o'clock, and I have to still get myself situated in the morning because to me right now my job if you want to call it a job is to show up to YouTube, and to you know, do like morning motivations and to come in the afternoon and to, you know, talk shop with you guys, whether it's surgical tech talk or building, building your business talk. That's my job right now. Right. And so is that a job though? And you're like, well, are you getting paid for it? Yes and no. I can, I'm not getting paid from YouTube for it. No, but that doesn't mean that I don't like, I can't create a product or a service or a tool to, to, to deliver to you guys. That's how that works. So I might not be getting paid. Um, it's, it is nice. It's like, I, don't, I mean, not to be funny, but it takes a while to, but I, I had to save my money, right? I don't get to go out and buy, spend my money on dumb stuff because I'm investing the money back into itself, back into myself, knowing that it's going to make a return. Diff, you know, like it's, it's a different way of living. So I could go out and like borrow a lot of control and blow money on partying and things like that but instead of me doing that i'm taking the money and i'm making sure i got enough to pay for my expenses so that i can stay home and deliver content and create content that's going to help other people and because i know that if i needed money like if i have absolutely needed cash i can make cash if i just even do somebody here or i can go out and sell one of my multiple service one of my multiple skills whether it's building a website for somebody or video editing or any of that stuff like i'm to the point now where i build up i was skill stacking if if that's what you want to call it i was skill stacking i was stacking my skills and i was choosing skills that at some point that I could do from anywhere in the world because I knew I wanted to be able to have location freedom. I knew that that was like something super important to me to have. And so I got the location freedom and now I'm very much aware of how, you know, I'm going to be moving forward, but I'm not set. It, like I'm still open to learning other things because they may bring me different experiences too. Right. So I can't just stop learning. That's not, you don't just learn and then stop. You know, like if you stop learning, then you start growing and then the opportunities stop. So the idea is to just keep learning and just keep applying what I learned. And sometimes like if it's my work, that may consist of me reading a book. Like it might, but that's, you know, it sounds crazy, but that's, that's work. If I got to read this book, this book might bring me inspiration to come deliver some a message to one of you guys or, you know, even a service or a product to one of you guys. So if we could take the time like this, I really learned this. And this was like one of those epiphany moments. I don't know if you're into like philosophy or all that stuff, but I am in theology and all that. So um, I think it was Einstein or Newton, one of the, I think it was Albert Einstein who I'm thinking of, but the idea came to him when like the idea of the light bulb or electricity one of those ideas came to him when he was looking out the window and that's i learned that like when i was able to sit still with myself and to give myself room to breathe when you can take out like take off some of the pressures of you know having to pay bills and 
um, because you might have a better job. Like it, it didn't come in the form of me having always business. Sometimes I just, when I started traveling, my income went up. And when my income went up, it took a different, I had like some relief a little bit, you know, because now I don't have to work as hard to create the lifestyle that I need. So that was when I started noticing certain things that I had a little more freedom, right? Even though I was still working 40 hours a day, I was only working 40 hours a day for six months out of the year. And so the other six months out of the year, I was able to wake up and make breakfast. And I was able to, you know, wake up and journal and drink coffee. And I enjoyed that. And that was putting more ideas in my head to like, okay, I can make, this is what I can do. I was able to create more. My creative juices was flowing a lot more when I was take when certain pressures aren't on you. And I'm going to tell you like your job is going, surgical tech is a, is a high pressure job and it's going to require a lot more energy out of you mentally and physically. So I knew that. And so that's when I started like kind of cutting back on even working as much because I was working PRN too. So then I would just be like, I'm not going to work this many hours. Even if I had to cut back on hanging out or, you know, purchasing certain things. If I, if I had to live off of less to have a better quality of life, then I was okay with that. Like it just, I was okay with that. As long as I could wake up when I want to and like maybe go outside and work in my garden as long as I want to, if I want to drink a bottle of wine on a Tuesday, I, I, I will. Like I have, like, that's what I wanted to have the freedom to do. And so I worked on ways that allowed me to create products or services that gave me that type of freedom or learning skill sets that gave me the freedom to where if I just worked on it 10 hours a day, I mean, 10 hours a week or 20 hours a week, I could still live the life that I want to live. But it did take me have, learning how to live off of less. Like I'm, that was like the first thing, like cutting out certain things. So that's why now, like you would see me without a car, but if I really wanted a, like the experience of a certain car, I could go rent the car for the weekend or the week. I could catch an Uber, you know, or like what I really do when I'm trying to get my day to day stuff done is I just wait for my mom because she has a car. But it allowed me to free up a lot more money to do the things that I want to do with my business. So I'm willing to sacrifice in certain areas. It's certain things that I'm just not going to pay for. It's just certain things that I'm just not going to do at this point because it's going to take away from the freedom that I have that I've created with a certain lifestyle. So I'm not rich. I learned how to live off a whole lot less. I'm not out here showing off. Like I'm not stunting on, on nobody. I'm doing basic shit over here. I when I would go grow when I would shop, I would go to thrift stores and I would turn thrift store stuff into outfits or I would resell it if it was a name brand. I would resell it on eBay. And I was making like Sometimes I make like $30 or $40 a week, $50 a week, just flipping thrift store clothes. You know what I'm saying? And so, and, and wearing them too, might I add, because I'm not going to spend a certain amount of money on jeans and shit. I'm not going to do that. I'm, that doesn't turn me on. What turns me on is when I open my Robinhood app and that shit is in the green and it's like, you're at a 10% increase. Like that is going to turn me on not no... Gucci bag or none of that. But this year, um, what I did do, I went and bought some clothes and I spent like a hundred and some dollars at Ross. My mom works at Ross, so I went and bought some clothes from Ross, and that's what that's what I did. I she works there, and then at certain times of year they give a give her a bigger bone, a bigger um discount or whatever. So I buy my stuff on sale. Like I don't spend money on like pointless things. I spend money on ad on my ads. <laughs> I'll spend three hundred dollars a month on running some ads to a product if I'm trying to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? I'll spend money on tools that are gonna help me market services and that are gonna teach me skills that I could freelance if I wanna go to Africa and live in Africa for a year. I can do this. I can do all of that from over there. Hi, how are you? Oh my God. You have a good wait a minute. I love how are you? I was I was watching your videos earlier today. Wait a minute. 
Is this the same? Yeah, this is the the um the PA. The the health educating PA, right? Am I right? I was watching you. Yeah, the um I love me a good thrift store. And then we have we have um yes, how are you? How are you guys? Oh my god. So I was at the we have a a pound thrift store here. And so I used to shop there too, but it's a little more competitive and it's just a little more like dusty in there. So I'll just go to the um <laughs> hey Fodlin, how are you? Oh my god, how are you guys doing today? Happy Sunday. Y'all missed me cooking this morning. I was cooking this morning. But yeah, so you guys, that's what um that's how I spend my money. And so then I just focused on building out businesses is my um my like retirement, I guess is is what you would call it, like retiring. I wouldn't call it retirement cuz I'll never stop working. Like working for myself, I should say. I'll never stop working for myself and I'll never stop like learning or trying to learn. That's definitely one of the things that I had to learn growing um as I've grown up, you guys. Like as I've live my life just keep reading books i read books and i don't like read like a specific book i'll read like a business book one day and then the next day i might read something else i love when brothers and sisters save money by going to thrift stores i love my grandmother did this to me with the thrift store situation my grandmother would have us at goodwill all like all times a day and then on the weekend we would go and resell whatever she bought, you know, at Goodwill. And so she actually like did that. <laughs> she did that to me. And so when I got older, I showed her how that we could take the stuff that she had brought and put on eBay. My wife, my wife and I have four kids. We almost always go to the thrift. You should definitely go there first. And especially like in nicer neighborhoods, because people give away stuff all the time that they just have too much of. And you can find all kinds of, I found a couple of salon chairs. Um, when I was doing, when I was first building out my studio, I found some salon chairs. And matter of fact, when I went, it was like eight salon chairs in there. I only needed two. I bought all eight of them and then I resold them. I did. I bought, I bought all eight of them because I had the money to, and I resold them. They were like $30 a piece. And because I knew how much they were worth, I resold them. Isn't it great when you see some super pricey name brand? And yes, I have like, I, it's plenty of stuff in there. That's what I was talking about earlier too. Like giving people ideas instead of, if you sew, if you're good, like with sewing, then you can go to Goodwill and instead of purchasing fabric from, you know, the stores from like Joann's and Michael's, go to Goodwill and tear apart like something from there because it's going to have a good quality. Like you might be able to find like some Louis Vuitton or Gucci, something like that in there and you can just remend it. I was watching this guy on here. He does that. He like redo, redo name brand clothing into a different style so it was like a a pouch like a fanny pouch i think he did but he took apart like some purse and a pair of pants and some more stuff and turned it into something totally different but if you like if you're good with doing stuff like that i would definitely do like a youtube channel or you know even a pot well if it's something like fashion definitely youtube or a blog but if it's not fashion you could do a youtube channel a website or a um a podcast but thrifting is definitely way to go like you guys if you're not through i even got some baskets and stuff for my garden from the thrift stores like i'm always in those places <laughs> no. oh that's funny <laughs> uh oh did i mess it up y'all got something in my eye oh my goodness I got a great textbook from the thrift store. I, um, when I first started looking for some books, I went to, to the thrift store and I was actually buying books, believe it or not, and selling them on, on eBay. 
I would buy certain books. It's just crazy how you find stuff that like you can sell in the thrift stores. If y'all, if you, and it, it does help if you know about things too. Like whatever you know about, then that's what you sell. So like, I didn't really know a whole lot about clothes, but I did know about name brand things. So I would look for name brand clothes and resell them. But too, like I was just saying um, about the salon chairs, I was able to go and like re like make an instant profit on salon chairs only because I knew how much they was worth. So you may know something or know how much something's worth and you can go out and actually start thrifting these things. If y'all don't watch Gary Vaynerchuk, he talks about that a lot. Um, maybe even doing garage sale, like going to garage sales, looking for certain things to resell online. Um, I talk about eBay a lot. I know there's a lot of new... Um, what is it, um, online thrifting apps and stuff like that. But I just know eBay, you're going to get traffic and it's probably going to sell. You're going to, and the money's going to come through PayPal. So you do have to have a PayPal account. But if you want to start on eBay, start with the stuff that you have in your house, especially if you have kids. If your kids are anything like my kid, he has so many clothes in there and shoes in there that he outgrows his clothes and shoes before they he like before they get bad so like he has a ton of shoes in there that i'll be posting on ebay and then clothes too he has clothes that are gently worn that i could go resell on ebay do you look the items on your phone at the thrift store to see yes i do and to see how much they sold for on ebay to see how much they caught to see how much they would go for as the original price like what you say and to see how much they're selling for on the platform that I'm a seller on, so on eBay, I would sell it on eBay. But that's just me. I'm com I'm more comfortable with eBay. Now, like I, it's people that swear by um, Macari and all those other websites. I'm not super familiar with those sites, but the idea is the same. You could sell it on any of those platforms. But I would definitely start with decluttering your house, your kids' clothes, the toys that you know they may not be using anymore. And sell them and with the kids clothes like for we can sell them as a lot like um, a lot being a bunch of the same size or maybe the same brand so you can say a lot of size five sixes or a lot of Carters and then they could just be different sizes but I would do the same size and with the kid clothes and I would sell it also if you have plus size clothes plus size clothes sell like hotcakes or on those on those websites uh, or at least for me, and I had plus size clothes because like I was telling you guys, my grandmother, this is what she would do as her as her job, like or, as her side hustle. She was a CNA for as, as long as that I can remember her working. And then she, but like a home health CNA. And then she would go on the week, during the week to Goodwill in our local neighborhood. We grew, I grew up um, a little bit south of Jacksonville when I would go to her house in Palatka and we would go in this little small country town and go to Goodwill and and we would take she would take the clothes to the laundromat and wash them and come home all throughout the week and be ironing and hanging up clothes and then on the weekend on Saturday and Sunday we would go to the flea market instead of going to like church we was at the flea market selling clothes and stuff and so me and my little cousins we'd be I just remember us running around the flea market and my grandma was still the clothes. So that's how I got exposed to that. And she did that all the way up until she died, you guys. Like the weekend before she died, she actually was still able to drive to the hot, to the flea market, set her stuff up, and resell her clothes. And you can do the same thing too. So I, I end up having a lot of her um, clothes and things from her, just like her house, because she had so much. It was so much. So I started learning how to do um, the same thing. That's really smart, selling clothes at the flea market. Yeah, she did that for years, like years, as long as I can remember, I, it's, it's for years. And we would be, I would hate going to Goodwill, but me and my cousin, I remember us, we would just be running in through the like racks of clothes and she would be buying clothes. And so plus size clothes, I had a lot of plus size clothes when she died. And because we was just clearing out a lot of stuff. And so I started selling plus size clothes. And I, it was like a lot of it being so bras, um, girdles, jeans, 
like shirts and all that type of stuff. You can, if you know anybody that has some like decent clothes or you can get some plus size clothes for like a little bit of nothing, and you will be able to resell them online. Do you place the items in that rent system? No, I actually have a lot of space here. I have a lot of space here um, where I'm at. And because it's, I only have one kid and a whole bunch of animals, I have a lot of space. I have a whole nother like mother-in-law suite. And on right now on the other side, one side has my salon set up um, like a studio. And then on the other side where the bedroom is, is where my, um, like I still have stuff that needs to be um, so, like my inventory, I guess is what you would call it. And so right now I'm also going through like the clothes that I don't want, um, the clothes that my son can't fit anymore. And I'll take all that stuff from in here and put it out there. But no, I don't have a storage unit. I won't get a storage unit because then I feel like I have too much stuff. But I have enough space to um, to do all of that, to do um, to have my inventory basically out of the way to where, um, you know, it's just not clutter in the house and stuff like that. I also would sell mugs. I started selling coffee mugs. Like I got into that niche. I think clothes is easier though. Yep, I do. My my house, my I write, so I rent here, so I, I do um, write off a portion of my rent. I write off a portion of my electricity. I write off a portion of my, I write my whole cell phone bill off, actually. Um, I write off any type of maintenance that I get done to the house that gets written off. What else gets written off? Um, when I had my car, I would still write off the gas and my car um, maintenance as well. And now I can take a piece of like if I because I put gas in my mom's car, I could just get the receipts, which I didn't I don't do because I normally can see on my credit card where um where I got gas from. And so I would write a part a portion of the gas off. And I wasn't writing off my insurance, though, which I probably should have. Um, that was not that I'm thinking about it. I don't think I added that on there, is it? But I actually it's funny that you asked me that. Thank you. Um, I ran into a, um, I, I wouldn't say smart. I just been working hard. I just been, it's just hard work. It really is what it is. Just hard work and a thirst for like knowledge, just wanting to know. But I recently talked to this lady that's a tax. Um, she has her own tax business and me and her are going to have lunch here in the next couple of days. And so I'm going to pick her brain and see what she know about tax, business tax and home taxes. And if she knows more than me, then, um, you know, maybe I'll, you know, pick or have her help me with my taxes and stuff. Because the idea is to keep our taxes down, you guys, if you don't know, with our business. Yeah, you know, but it's just do a little bit at a time. Just don't. Um, and if you if you know that you're doing business, like this is what I, I had to understand that my life was business. Like once I stepped into that energy, like life is business. I'm not just here living life, you know, like I still have to make, eat and provide. So I started moving into like treating myself like a business. I think there's a schedule. See, you have to file. Yep. Uh-huh. It is. Now, see, I know a little bit about it because I follow. So if you look up Lynn Richardson, She's a financial advisor on, like, she's on YouTube, and it's L-Y-N-N -N Richardson. If you look up her YouTube channel, she talks a lot about home business and how we should be paying our kids. Um, so we should have a home business, excuse me, you should have a home business, but one, because it's give you, it gives you the most tax write-offs, but two, you could pay your kids up to $12,000 and it would be tax free for them and a tax deductible for you. So her technique or method is for you to have your home business. Yeah, my wife and I are coached by her now. Oh, good, yeah. So I haven't taken her coaching class, but I was definitely considering um, for 2021, that was something that is on the list is to talk to more coaches and for myself and to have um to go to more like conferences around things. Yes, yeah, she is. I've been watching her, I wanna say probably since the beginning of the year, like before COVID um really hit. I was already watching her trying to figure out like 
really what happened i got my life insurance agent license and in the process of me getting my life insurance agent license i was looking at financial services um people and stuff like that and she came up and that was kind of why i got my financial that's i was looking at financial services um the opportunities that life insurance offered and so when i was listening to her she had touched on it and i just kind of stuck with her after that and yeah, a lot of people don't know that about life insurance too, that you can use, it's like tactics that you can use that help um, help you avoid taxes, certain taxes also that help you build um, certain wealth. Um, it's like a wealth strategy is really what I was looking at, different wealth strategies. And I end up taking the insurance license because it was, I was able to learn what um, I was looking for. And then I was just like, well, let me just take the, you know, take the test. And so I passed it. And then I was just like, oh, now I'm a life insurance agent. But it was more, like I say, because of the information that I wasn't aware of. And I know if I'm not aware of it, not to be like, I'm the smartest, you know, thing, but I'm out here, like, at least studying some of these financial strategies and people that I know don't know this and I don't know this. And so I wanted to learn it just so when I get, you know, run into people, I can share something um, like this. Oh, thank you. It was the easiest certification I've ever taken. I mean, honestly, <laughs> it wasn't hard, but you do have to go through like a series of like background checks and like you have to get fingerprinted and all that. Like it was the whole situation, but the knowledge was, the knowledge is definitely there. I was just going to say that the knowledge was worth it. It was definitely worth it. It was definitely worth it to to know that you could turn your own self into your own banker and just to have all of that like, but to understand that you have to have a diversified um, por uh, wealth portfolio. It can't just be, you know, on one topic. So I'm, yeah, I do have my life insurance agent license, but I'm not just promoting life insurance as a way to build wealth because there is some things in there that first you might not need, you know, like a full or whole insurance. You might need term or whatever, just understanding that and to be able to share that with my people. But for me, I like business better. Like I like being in business. I like what business brings to the table. And I like how much money you can get if as your return on your investment. Because even when you're looking at stocks, which uh, the life insurance um, strategies kind of still are um, in that kind of same category, I would say. When you're looking at the stocks, um, you're going to get between 7 to 10%, uh, we'll say, on your return of your investment, which is still good. It's better than putting your money into the bank. So a lot of us, well, at least for myself, I got caught up with when I get a paycheck, you know, you pay all your bills and then you say you're going to save some money at the end of the month and so you don't or whatever. And so what I started doing is that instead of my money going to the bank, it does go to the bank, but I automatically send the majority of it to my stock um, brokerage. And right now I'm using Robinhood. Um, most of you guys probably already know that. And But I'm working on Fidelity. I like Robinhood's interface. It's way user-friendly. It's just easier for me to use than fidelity but fidelity um is more like you know the big dogs versus like robin hood and so i'm going i'm leaning more into trying to learn fidelity's um interface and stuff like that their their dashboard but i send my money to robin hood and right now what i would advise anybody doing is just to send it straight to etfs don't worry about um because you'll still be diversified if you do like a voo which is the S which is the ETF for the S and P five hundred, which is the the top. Your yeah, Robin Hood, you can check easily. Yep, and you can get your money back if you like after you sell. It's easy to you to use. But if you do VOO right now, you get um, which is the S and P. It's the ETF for the S and P five hundred, which is the top performing um, companies that are publicly traded right now. And so instead of you picking one stock like Amazon or Microsoft or the, like instead of doing that, you purchase an ETF. And right now mine has got me at almost 7%. E even with the stock market being the way that it was earlier this year, 
in his recovery. Um, I wouldn't just solely be in the stock market though, you guys. So as you can see, like I'm still like in business and in the stock market, even though I don't have a whole bunch of money, like I'm not out here like rolling in dough, but the money that I do have is going to specific spots and they're going there because money makes money. Like your money works for you. You don't work for the money, right? So you have to send the money out there. If you sit in our money, it's not working for you. So the idea is to put your money to work to go make other little baby monies, right? <laughs> so you, that's what I'm doing. So no money is like sitting for a long period of time. And if I do have to sit on it, it's sitting in the stock market. At least over there, I know that, you know, I'm not, I, it's not guaranteed that I'm going to lose. If you leave it in a, in a savings account or a checking account, just by inflation, you're going to lose money. And so that's not, we don't want to lose any money, right, guys? The whole point of us making money is, is to keep it. Put that money on the stripe, on the strip, on the strip, what strip? Definitely not on like um, Las Vegas and those gambling. <laughs> but I would definitely um, look into, um, you're doing the right thing. Robert Kidd said, yes, apparently lived in, lived in their car at one time. I would live in my car if it was a Jeep. <laughs> I would live in my car. I, have, I would have like, because I don't have to, obviously. Um, but yeah, I love, and actually I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So if you guys haven't read it, um, definitely listen to, read it, get it on Audible, um, some kind of way, listen to it, read it or whatever. And that'll help you kind of understand too um, how biz like how to think more business. And to the poor dad is very much like a lot of people in life right now, and they don't understand that you know business is gonna bring probably bring you more opportunities than actually being a employee. But being an employee is not all bad. You just have to use it to your advantage and understand like they're your investors at the least is if you change the way you see it then you will understand okay they're my investors but if you're not actually investing the money that you're working for then what are you doing besides just paying bills like we're not here to just pay bills we're here to enjoy our lives and it, the best way for you to do that is to have more than one stream of income you guys and so that's just what it is it's not any it's not like rocket science. It's no special formula. The more streams of income that you have, the better you'll be. I'll still have a habit of thinking I'm the poor dad. Well, don't be... Okay, so if you think that, why do you feel like you're the poor dad? When you can still leverage your knowledge. like you, if, And you're doing YouTube, so you got YouTube and your regular job, right? And, and honestly, though, the thing is... We were taught that. So a lot of us were taught, go to school, you know, get a good job and you will have a good life. So that's not technically all like your fault. It would be your fault if you stay in that energy and don't try to, once you have the, the information that, okay, there's also more to it than what I've been taught, then you move into that space and not so much just stay in the space of I'm an employee. I'm not going to diversify, diversify my income streams. And I'm just going to do it this way. Don't be so structured in that. Like, still be a PA. Get that kind of... Because PA is still making pretty decent money. Like, we not going to... You know, let's not be silly here because you're making money. Right? And so, you're going to make that money. And you're going to take the leverage of being a PA. And you're going to go and start a YouTube channel like you did. Right? And then you're going to also maybe write an ebook on something. And then maybe you will... Start talking about certain merchandise that you know you can refer other people to and you will get a commission. So that's you don't you're as long as you're diversifying your income streams and having multiple income streams, it's not you're the poor dad. The poor dad only had one job, right? And that was to go to work for other people to go to school and stuff like that. See, I know you're making money out here. <laughs> I was thinking about going to PA school and then I was just like, I'm way more business than like structure my i can't with school like i can with school but i'm over here trying to build so many different businesses i was just like after i'm done with 
this first assist thing, I'm done with school as far as like a, a formal education go, like formally. Now, it may be for other people, so I'm not here to frown upon formal education because it does offer benefits, especially if you want to go to be certain a certain profession. Like you have to go to school to be a PA. You have to go to school to be a nurse. You have to go to school to be a doctor. So if you if that's what you're drawn to do, then go do that. But don't just be a PA and only get in money you know, from the, um, you could be a consultant for us PAs. Consultant for you to tell you where to put, like how to spend your money, not spend your money, but to invest your money. <coughs> I'll consult you on anything. I would really, I mean, I'm just, this is consulting right here, ain't it? <laughs> but I just think it's different ways to, like you could, especially being in health, like online health, beauty, health and beauty and like um oh that's something to talk about i mean i'm i'm open to really look i'm i'm fluid with this this is how this is my life you have to go wherever the current push you the current is currency right <laughs> but what i was saying is you definitely have to look at um health beauty and like small businesses is like really big online like health and beauty is definitely big money so if you're a pa if you're not promoting your services then you can be out here offering different products you can even offer your service as far as being a health educator online you can sell you know whatever um like if you want to teach other nurses or other PAs certain things in your field, if it's a certification that they need to take, you can show them how to take it. Like that was something that, you know, I try to show other surgical techs how to take their first assist or their surgical tech exam, excuse me. And that's just, it's different ways to actually like monetize what you already know. So you would take what you know your profession. I'll be telling it doesn't matter what the profession is. There's still products out here that can be so sold to other people that are you're offering them a um a solution to whatever problem they have. So maybe you know more about suicide or pre suicide prevention or how to um eat healthier if you have diabetes or you know whatever however you want whatever solution it is that you have experience in, in is what I would talk about. So many of my PA colleagues have brought luxury cars after finishing school. The loan companies love PA. Yeah, because they know y'all making money. That's why, yeah. Yeah, the goal is to not, and then so they they PAs, right? So now you got, because you still have the student loan debt, like for some reason, just because people defer it, they forget that they still have to pay this money back, right? So you got the student loan debt that you need to clear up. And now you finna go out and get all these houses. It's a postgraduate trap. Yeah, the thing is, it, but they have to have a mindset of, okay, I'm gonna clear out this debt. I'm not gonna keep accumulating debt, especially when you got student loan debt. You know, like most PAs, it, especially because how long it takes, you know, the school for you to go to school, it's gonna have a lot of, it could come with student loan debt is what I'm saying. So then now you are making a hundred and something thousand plus a year. Right, so you got all this student loan debt and a house and this luxury car. And so now you done, now you have to go work at these hospitals, you know, and it might not be the best gig, but it is what you have. But if you can live off of less, if you can learn to live off of less, especially until you get the loans paid off. Like I had, I didn't like, I didn't know to do this. I, I had debt. I had a car loan. I had a car loan and sometimes I didn't have enough money to pay that. Like I really had to make a shift in my thought process. Like I had to change how I was looking at stuff and not really being a victim, like taking myself out of that victim mentality and realizing that I was in more control of my life than what I was you know, accepting responsibility for. So I, I looked at what I was doing and I was like, okay, I'm going to go and this is how I'm going to make my money. So I started making money. I would do hair on the weekends. I was doing hair like every weekend. I would be working sometimes as a surgical tech during the week. I was PRN, but I was making more money on the weekends doing hair, but hair still wasn't just enough. So then I went and said, I'm going to travel 
as a surgical tech because at least traveling gave me more money on a consistent basis and I had more control over how long I was going to be on contract for. So I was taking like eight and 13 week contracts. If I could stay at the facility longer than I would and I would stay there for the, the six months or whatever and I would take that money and I would have to figure out how to live off of just that money for the, the remainder of the year. But also being able to invest it. So I had to stop doing certain things. I had to pay my car note off first. That was the first thing I did. So I paid my car off. and then, Or that wasn't the first thing I did. But that was one of the things that I did. I paid my car off. And I basically caught up on every bill that I possibly could have that I was behind in. And then I started living off of less money. I just stopped spending money on... I stopped getting... I didn't have cable for years, like before it was cool to, to be having Netflix. Like I, I was watching Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime over nine years ago. I stopped, I stopped paying for cable and I just was streaming those things. Um, and then I got the fire stick when it came out. And so I don't pay for, um, I stopped paying for like buying nice clothes or not nice clothes, but like going to the stores and buying clothes. Recently, what I had to stop doing, and I'm still struggling with this, is eating out. Um, eating out is way cheaper for you to cook your own food. I like to eat out. And I think it has a lot to do with my lifestyle, like traveling and going to different places and eating out there. But I do like to eat out a lot. And so now I have to work on that because is it really worth it at the end of the month when you spent like four or $500 eating out? When I really needed to spend another two or three hundred dollars on ads to to figure out, you know, if this product really is worth my time and stuff like that. And so I'd rather spend my money on, like I say, ads or creating web like create purchasing tools that's gonna help me do um Yeah, it is convenient. It is convenient. It's convenient and that that does have a lot to do with the conveniency and it's I don't have to clean up like I won't have to wash no dishes. It is convenient, it is, and so but it doesn't. It's no excuse, honestly. So I really have to pay more attention to my that habit. That's the one that I'm working on now, and it's a work in progress. It's never like oh I'm done. You know, I just, it's one little thing at a time, but learning how to budget was one thing. Actually looking at my income and understanding where my money was going was a lot more intimidating to me than I realized. And so, yeah, it's, uh, I'm fine, the same, but, um, I looked at my budget, you guys, and I was just like, okay, this is what it is. Yeah, that's a lot of money, right? I'm um, eating out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat like right now I want some Subway like I have a taste for Subway but I did cook so I'm gonna just eat what I got in there and it's just gonna have to be you know what it is but I do have a taste for some Subway right now maybe I'll make me a oh I got some I'll make a sandwich I'll make a different kind of sandwich than what I got because I want something but um I'm just gonna probably make some bacon I'll make me a bacon and um a BLT that might fix the the taste that I have for me to order um to order my subway but yeah like that's that's really my biggest um challenge right now is eating out and just not door dashing everything um not having a car is something like some people would find to be um you know something they can't live without but i had already set my life up to where i wasn't leaving the house like that uh, a lot so i got in the car accident and instead of me going out and buying another car or even getting into a car loan then I decided that I was just going to leave the money and I was going to take everything that I got from the, the accident and put into the stock market until I could figure out what I want to do with it. But in, back in the day, I would have just went and hopped into another car note. But even though my car was paid off, though, that was another thing. I was definitely not trying to get into a car loan because I don't want to pay the interest on a car loan. And two, I didn't want to have to tie up for the $600 a month, you know, when I want to do other things with that money. That money, to me, is way more valuable if I leave it in its liquid form versus tying it up into a liability, which is a car. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and sell your car because it, I have to be way more physical in my day-to-day -day 
because I don't have a car. So when I want to do certain things, I'm probably going to have to go walk to do it. Now, my mom is close by, so I could wait on her and then get a ride with her or catch an Uber or catch, well, I don't catch the bus, but I could catch the city bus because there are buses everywhere by my house. Um, I'm just not with it right now because the whole, like, ugh, I don't want to do it. But because I don't want to end up like on a bus with somebody who got um, something. And so anyway, it's no buses right now. But in the future, when I'm a little more comfortable with the situation, maybe I'll get on the bus. But the point is, I do have a bike. I get my bike or I'll walk and I'll, and to me, that's helping me not spend money on things that I don't need, like going to the store and purchasing things that I don't need because I don't have like the convenience of a car to just go to the store and purchase things that I don't need. Um, and so just, and also, like I say, having the money available to me was just more valuable to me than a car. That's just really how it played out. I just found more value in not having a car than I did health wise and monetarily. Like it was, it was easier for me to just be like, oh, I just want to go get a car. And every time I was thinking about a car and even now when I think about purchasing a car, it's just like, no, if you can't purchase it cash, then you can't have it. And what I can purchase cash, I don't want. Cause you got to still leave money on the, like I can't just, I'm not gonna spend all the money on a car. So I don't want to just be putting money into something that's gonna, you know, possibly be a money pit and it's gonna be worse than me just actually not having a car. So as of right now, there's no car on the table, but to me, I'm okay with that sacrifice. And to you, you may not be. Um, like, and also where I live at, I don't live in a HOA area. I decided that staying in this same place because I can afford it and it offers me um, multiple like spaces to do different things that I wouldn't be able to get if I was to move into a newer um, area. So like I have the garden in the front, I have chickens and animals and I also have a, um, so I got the garden in the front, the chickens, the chickens and the animals in the back and then I have a mother-in-law suite that allows me to have two more workspaces. And then I still have like another workspace on this side of the room, which is like our activity room. And I'm going to turn that into a green like room where I'll have microgreens growing in there, which is something that I want to try out for next year to see if I can actually like turn that into something. Because microgreens and just gardening in general, selling vegetables to um, either the neighbors or to local restaurants would be something that I'm in, is something that I'm interested in. And so that's like a hobby of mine that I'm going to try to monetize, that I will be able to monetize. Even if I can't sell the microgreens or the vegetables to, um, to other, to other um, local restaurants, I'll be able to sell them to my neighbors. It's plenty of people that ride past my house and because they can see that it's a garden you know, there and and in a minute I'll be selling a whole bunch of chicken eggs, so they'll be able to get free. I mean, they'll be able to get organic, free range, brown eggs from here, <clears throat> and that's just another stream of income. And that's just not something that's major. If you have a house, um, and you're able to have a garden or have chickens or anything, I would advise you to just start maybe start a garden. That'd be the easiest thing. Start growing a couple of different vegetables because even if it, even if you can't sell it, if you don't grow enough to sell, if you look at it from the concept of you'll be saving money, it'll definitely get, um, I got a minivan and two coupes from the auction. They both work. Oh, really? And so I don't really know anybody here that has any, uh, the auction license. Like I would do that. I would do that. I would def I'm all for that. But I'm not I don't want a car payment and like that's just not an option. But I would go and I would do a um I would do an auction if I had access to one. I don't know anybody that um that has access to one, Omar. But that's a good idea though. I have heard about that in the um um in the past that people would go to auctions. So I would do something like that. If I can find somebody, I think my landlord, actually, I'm going to ask my landlord because um, my landlord is super cool. You guys, I've been living here for like six years. And if it wasn't for him, like 
the last couple of years was I was good, but a couple of years back, like he could have like really put me out, but he didn't. He just worked with me, and um, now we're like really cool. But anyways, he he owns several houses, like he owns a whole bunch of, them, but he used to own a car dealership. So I'm gonna ask him, and he got me like tires one year. I only paid like two hundred dollars for four tires. That was like two hundred dollars for four tires on my Jeep, and they put them on for me. Like they put the tires on. That was two hundred dollars, like all inclusive. And so he um. He really does look out for me. Um, he's just a good person. I mean, I'm pretty sure he would look out for anybody. Yeah, I was ignorant of options. Also, rude of them not. I'm a big advocate of them. You can get someone you trust to look at the cards with you. Yeah, I'm gonna ask him. He'll do it if I talk. If I ask him, I'm gonna talk to him and see if he still have access. But I hadn't even really thought about it. Honestly, I just kind of was like, you know, whatever. I'll just get a car when I get one <laughs> and so i'll ask him and see if he's um still has his license because i know he had it before because he had a dealership license or something he was telling me when he got my tires and so that's another thing you guys networking you always net like build stay building i stay building like relationships with people even though like it's my it's a landlord tenant relationship he's my landlord does be like he's all about business and so he knows that i'll be over here like working on myself and building out businesses and stuff like that so now he's more like you know helpful but i think if you don't pay him and all that kind of stuff it may be a different <laughs> it may be a different story but he knows like i'm i'm um he don't have to worry about his money over here so but i'm gonna ask him about that because i hadn't really considered it i hadn't really considered um an auction but I probably will be able to at least get something decent that, like you say, I don't want to be paying like 20, 2500 on the street and then I'm still putting like money into it. Yeah, I know. I know. And he has, he went up on my rent $50 the whole time I've been living here and I've been here for six years. So he only went up $50 and he, and he just did that like two years ago. Because his property tax or something he said went up. But he, um, everybody that, that I know that lives around me, they ask me if he has properties, like, all the time. Because I talk, like, he's just, and when something goes wrong in the house, like, he fixes it. Um, it, he just, I mean, I mean, I just really can't say anything. I mean, he's still a landlord, obviously. Like, if I ain't paying him, it probably would still be. You know, he would be trying to make sure that I go ha have a job and have a good job and trying to find things for me to do to make the money. But I don't really need him to do that anymore. But when I first moved in, he did help me out a lot. And so I think he knows now that I know to how to make enough money to keep keep him happy, at least to keep the, the rent paid. But yeah, so living here, though, um, I have that garden out there and I'll definitely be used utilizing it. Like I have a ton of collard greens and stuff out there right now. Um, I'll be turning this little area over here that's behind us into another stream of income. And yeah, just this, this is where, um, this is, this is basically how I live my life now is just creating, um, yeah, that's probably why he, that's probably why he nice to me. He just want to keep me here. So I don't tell like he comes to the house, you know, I let him come through the house or whatever. I, I don't have nothing to hide. Like ain't nothing. The only thing he did tell me when I first moved in, he didn't want a whole bunch of people living here. And it's because how the house set up, like it's a lot of rooms in the house. And I guess he was thinking that, you know, it was just going to be a lot of people living in this. And I was just like, no. You know, but I don't think he expected the animals in the garden to be the way it is. I didn't ask. I didn't ask at all. I just started messing with the yard. And so if you see it, you'll be like, oh, my God, you didn't ask. I'm like, I didn't ask him. I just put mulch down over his whole front yard. One day he came and he was just like, what's going on? I was just like, oh, nothing. I'm just starting a garden. And he was cool with that. Thank you. Yes, you have to come back. I've been here. I've been doing lives. Um... I'll be doing lives. You have to go live on your channel. Also, if you're on Instagram, please, please, please send me a DM on Instagram. I would love to interview you if that's something that you're open to. I'm taking, I'm doing interviews next week. Thank you. Um, I'm doing interviews. Please, like, if you would like to be interviewed, if you're open to that, 
Um, I, I was interviewing surgical techs, but you you would know something about being in the OR and things like that, or just give us your perspective on the on your career. On oh, Friday nights, okay, I have to check it out. I'm gonna have to turn on, so I don't have no notifications. I'm definitely gonna have to turn on a notification. But if you're open to it, okay, yes, please do, please do. So I'll know that it's you. I don't um, just let me know because I would definitely love to interview you. I'm probably finna get off of here too because it has been like two hours and I'm hungry. <laughs> Okay, so I think that's it, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and go. I hope this video was useful to somebody out there. If you're watching the replay, um, yeah, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye, you guys.